Welcome! Today in Unit 7 we look at the limit h goes to zero of this difference quotient and we call this the derivative or instantaneous rate of change. And we have already done that in a couple of examples, but let me just repeat the case when we have uh, x to the n, e to the a x, the trig functions, and then look at some examples. First of all, we have also to repeat the picture. So we have a function, which I draw here as a graph. <coughs> and then we have x, and we have x plus h. And what we have is uh, x plus h, f of x plus h minus f of x is this. So this is the rise. <coughs> and then the h, which we have at the bottom here, that's the run. <coughs> Rise over run, that's the slope, so the difference quotient. <coughs> fx plus h minus f of x over h. This is also called uh, an average rate of change. <coughs> a slope, and the slope of a secant of a, of a, of a, of this, uh, line, <coughs> secant line. And now we take the limit when h goes to zero. So when h goes to zero, what we get, we get a, a derivative, we call this derivative, and it's also called instantaneous <coughs> rate of change. <coughs> and uh, it's the slope of the tangent. <coughs> These are all the things. But what is important is that we take this limit h goes to zero, which uh, has been anticipated already early by Greek mathematicians like Zeno. Uh, Archimedes was working on it. Zeno has nothing has survived of Zeno's writing, but Aristotle was writing about Zeno's paradoxons. And one of the problems was which which Zeno was pondering. You know, we have a we have an arrow. We have an arrow moving. And uh, at any moment of time, the arrow is fixed. How can it move? <clears throat> so it's a, it's a, a deep question. And uh, the mathematics works. And we can we have a whole we ho have a whole uh, theory about this, and that's calculus. We have already looked at the case x to the n by deforming the algebra and seeing if you do the right deformation we get actually just n times x to the n minus 1. I want to do that now in a traditional way. So when we have a x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h and see what we get. If you find this out, if you expand this out, we get the x to the n, and then we get the n times h times uh, x to the n minus 1. And then you get uh, something, maybe a constant a2, which is binomial coefficients, but we are not interested in that. Uh, in the details, <coughs> plus etc. etc. plus h to the n, and then minus x to the n, <coughs> and then the whole thing divided by h. So what happens is uh, a very important thing which happens is that that x to the n cancels out. That x to the n cancels out, and then there is everything here has an h also in, so the h also cancels away. And uh, so it's n minus 1. Everything here, all these powers of h, just are reduced by 1. And then when you, you, you look, when you see you have a n x times n minus 1 plus h times something else, which we are not interested in, because when h goes to 0, this goes to 0. And so we have a d over dx, a very important formula, x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1. <coughs> most important formula in calculus and uh, because now we can deal with general polynomials, any polynomial we can differentiate. And this also works for fractions. Uh, we will just look at examples and see how that, how that works. For example, for the square root, we have already seen it in the square root in the homework, you do it for, a, for another case. So that's the first uh, example. Let's go to the exponential. The second example is the exponential function. And also this we have looked at in a discrete setting and we have defined the exponential function as just the limit 
when h goes to zero of this expression here. So this is the definition when h goes to zero of this expression. And we have seen when we take the derivative here with respect to the discrete derivative, this derivative with a, with a fixed h, we get just the same function back. So we have seen already, I'm not actually doing here more, when we have e to the a x, we get a times e to the a x. <clears throat> we have done that in the homework for today again. Uh, so that's the, that's the statement. Very important statement. And by the way, it also allows you to differentiate in general any so maybe I just write that down, d over dx of uh, b uh, to the x. You know, you don't need the e here. You can take any base here. And what you can use is you can use the identity that b to the x is just uh, e to the x times uh, log b. <coughs> so that's then the, your constant, your constant a here. So what you can do is you can... Uh, you can uh, you can now differentiate that with uh, so you what you get is just <coughs> you get just log b times e to the x. and in general you can also take an a if you take an a here you just get an a here and an a here because what you have is if you have a here then you get uh, you get you get the a here and a times log b is that's what you get out. a times log b, that's what you get out. a times log b. <clears throat> cool. So that's the exponential function. Very important. Now we can immediately also get the trig function. So the modern way to do that is to use the exponential function here. And what we have is e to the i a x. That's uh, cosine ax plus i sinus ax. So that's an identity which is due to Euler. The complex numbers have been introduced by Gauss. So we have a, a complex number is a plus ib. And i is the uh, imaginary number, which is a minus 1. So that's a very important identity, and that's all we need, because now we know how to differentiate that if we take the der derivative. So if we take the derivative, take the derivative. <coughs> so if you take the derivative, we get just i a, right? i a e to the i a x is equal to d to the d x cosine a x plus i d to d d x sinus a x. <coughs> So I just took the derivatives on both sides from this Euler identity, and I have here uh, uh, another a, a new identity. But I can replace this again with cosine a x plus i sinus a x, cosine a x plus i sinus a x is the same thing, right? So that's the same thing, and that's just i a cosine a x minus a sinus a x. So that's the same thing. So it's the same same thing what we have on the just write it like that. So this is equal to that. Now we can re, we can look at the real and imaginary parts. So what we have is when we look at the real part d over dx cosine a x that's uh, minus a, a sinus a x that's what we have here for the real part and the imaginary part is here e over dx of sinus ax with i, that's this. So we get immediately these formulas from that uh, beautiful Euler formula. Okay, let's look at a few examples. We have already looked at the square root function, and uh, so this, this goes algebraically, but we are doing it the same way that we have done last time. So we have as the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x over h. We take the limit when h goes to zero, and the trick was just to multiply this with uh, the square root of uh, x plus h plus the square root of x, and also divide by that the uh, square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. <coughs> so nothing happened here, but uh, the nice thing is this 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 uh, this nicely uh, simplifies because when we foil it out. <coughs> 
when we foil it out, we get x plus h, this squared minus this squared minus x over h times, and then that square root of x plus h plus square root of x. And that goes away. That's the magic that cancels away. And so the, then, then, then the h goes away. And so we have uh, 1 over square root of x plus h plus square root of x. So now, uh, now we can take the limit. This is an identity here. So we kind of healed it. And when, when h goes to 0, then we get 1 over 2 times square root of x. And in the homework, you work on some similar thing with the cube root. So if you take 1 over, let's, if that's n equal to minus 1, right, x to the n for n equal to minus 1, that's, that goes into the same uh, bin here. So that would give you just minus 1 times, uh, so this is x to the, mi x to the minus 2. So that's minus 1 over x squared. So that's kind of the, 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 the expression you get when you just blindly put it in here. But we can double check that this really works. And so we have 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. We can simplify that by putting it over a common denominator. <coughs> so we have x minus x plus h. Then we have a minus, this goes away, right? The, the x goes away here. So this is minus h over x plus h times x. Uh, no, no, the h goes, the h goes, you have actually to divide by h also. And that cancels. And so that's minus 1 over x plus h times x. So this expression is the same than that after this manipulation. And when now h goes to 0, so this goes into minus 1 over x squared. I mentioned this already before. 2 to the x is a, always can be written as an exponential of x times log 2. So that's what we always do. When we have an a to the x, we can write it like that. And now we can differentiate that. We know the rule, right? And this is equal to a. So this gives us just the a out. So this is log 2 times e to the x times log 2. So that's actually log 2 times 2 to the x. <coughs> okay, finally for d and e, I don't want to say too much because we actually have assigned this as a homework. But it's in general true that d over dx, and so we can generalize this, and you take some a plus x to the n. That's actually just n times a plus x to the n minus 1. Now I, we invite you to think about this in the homework. That's the end. <clears throat>